hunting the stock market took tremendous losses. Tremendous losses. <coughs> now this is kind of interesting. Now, this will be an interesting number for you. It was estimated by economists that American stockholders lost almost 30 billion dollars in October through November, etc., of 1929. 30 billion. Now I'm going to tell you how much 30 billion is today. Oh my gosh. So it's estimated that the American stockholders in 1929-1930 lost nearly 30 billion dollars during the stock market crash. Today that would be, and you can write it down if you can figure the decimals and commas, 422 billion, 535,000, I'll help you out here because I, okay, 422 billion, 535,000, or million, excuse me, 211,000, $267.61. That's how much money in today's money was lost in the stock market in 1929, 1930. $422,535,267.61. That's crazy. Yeah. Now, think about this. What happened in America economically after this crash. What types of things no longer existed? Bonds. Where are bonds from? Where do you get a bond? Banks. Banks across the United States began closing their doors. They had no money. Banks began to close their doors. What else might shut down? Well, before we get to that, what? what? Say it. Factories and mines shut down because there was more supply than demand. Are you going to make more things when you can't sell what you already have? No. No, so factories and mines shut down because there was more supply than demand. <clears throat> if factories and mines shut down, who else is going to close their doors? Stores. Businesses. Very good. No customers coming in to purchase items. So businesses are going to close down. And who transports that stuff from the factories Railroad. to the railroads are going to shut down. Getting back to, I believe, what Aurora said, leading to high... What? Aurora? Well, you said... Un well, did you say... Who said unemployment? I didn't. Oh, unemployment. There you go. Rihanna said unemployment. I said, hold on. So, your banks closed down. Your factories closed down. Your mines closed down. Your stores closed down. Your railroads closed down. All who employ people. So the unemployment rate is going to become a major problem in the United States in the late 1920s and early 1930s. I'll give you some examples. By the end of the decade of the 1920s, they estimated that more than 650,000 Americans were out of work. 650,000 by the end of 1929. 650,000 by the end of 1929. Yeah. What was the population of the U.S.? I don't know that. That's a good question. I mean, that's a good one. Another one to look up. Now, that unemployment rate rose by 1932 to what? Anybody want to take a guess? From 650,000 to what by 1932? About 12 million. 12 million unemployed workers by 1932. What are we going to have in 32? A presidential election, which we'll talk about later. But why did we have a crash in the stock market? Here's what historians say. They give three reasons why we had the crash of the stock market resulting in the Great Depression. One we already talked about. Too many Americans borrowed money to invest in the stock market. Who'd that borrow that money from, Julie? Bank. And what did the bank get paid back at the end? Nothing. Nothing. So banks closed, right? If you have no banks in the United States, you're going to have a depression. So historians give one reason as 
the reason for the Great Depression was that too many Americans borrowed money to invest in the stock market. And when the stock market went belly up, they lost their money. And if they lost their money, did they pay back their loans? No. Nope. And then the banks went under. Another reason why we had a Great Depression and the crash of the stock market is America's high tax or tariff policies after World War I. America's high tariff or tax policies after World War I. Laramie, who are we taxing that caused us such a problem? We're taxing ourselves because we were making good money. Who are we taxing? We're taxing the countries who wanted to um, import goods. Um, actually, it's, you're close. We tax the countries that wanted to export goods from us. We charged them such a high tax to buy our goods, they quit what, Elisa? Buying it, and which resulted in more supply than demand. That's why the factories couldn't get rid of things, is because we had such a high tax or tariff on foreign countries that they decided they weren't going to purchase goods from us anymore, leaving more supply than demand. And the last reason that historians give for the crash of the stock market and Great Depression is it's just simply part of the American system and people in general. Okay? Now, we have a little of this going on now, I think. There's a huge difference between me and my parents concerning budgeting and finance and all that. I can tell you right now that my mom and dad never bought anything of a major purchase unless what? Absolutely. They had the money in hand. My mom and dad never bought a car ever on credit. Ever! They saved the money and paid for it. I'm 60 years old, June 26th. I have never bought a car of any magnitude without borrowing the money. Not once. Not one time. Now, everybody's different, okay? So, we, I spent my money by borrowing it. I spent money I didn't even have. And that's the American system. That's what they're talking about here. These people in the 1920s were making big money. Were they saving any of it? No. Nope. Heck no, they were not only not saving, they were borrowing on top of that to invest in the stock market. What's another example of the American system today that can get you in trouble financially? This is actually a debit card, but credit cards. How many people, how many you ever watch on TV? Oh, your credit card maxed out, we can help you out. We'll only make you pay half as much as you owe. You ever hear those kind of commercials on TV? What happens when you get involved with somebody like that? They kind of own you because they're going to charge you to get yourself out of trouble, and then they're going to get you out of trouble, and you only have to pay half your credit card bill, and then what's going to happen to your credit rating? You know what I'm saying? That's what's happening. When they put credit cards in grocery stores, do you think people go buy groceries that can't afford to buy groceries because it's easy just to slip the old credit card in there? That's the American system. And back in the 1920s, people were not saving. Did people save after the Depression? Yes. I think the Depression, and my mom and dad grew up in, as young children in the Depression. Okay, My mom was born in 1917. My dad, 1927, right in the middle of that mess. They learned that you better save a dollar, and they did. My parents were frugal. You know, and I, and I inherited some decent money from my parents when they passed away. I told my kids, you've already got your inheritance along the way here. That car I bought you, Sheldon, when you got out of high school, that's part of your inheritance. So my kids aren't going to get this large sum of money when I die. But that's what everybody worked for. If you grew up in, the, in 1917 and 1927, like my folks, you saved your money with the idea of giving it to your kids. Okay? My father-in-law is 90, and he was born in 1927, I think. Um, but anyway, he saves his money like crazy because he wants to leave something for his kids. That's an old-fashioned thought process. You know what I mean? And so now we're not in that anymore. And from like probably 19, you know, 25 to probably 1960s, we were conservative, and then we kind of got a little crazy, and then the 70s with the energy crisis and all that put us back down. But anyway, we're a country of debt. 
Okay, Gil McKendry would tell you as a banker not to get yourself lined out like that. He gives advice like that all the time. That's what he does for a living. But people, I don't think, always listen. So the third reason why we had a Great Depression it was simply part of the American system. A depression's in inevitable when easy money is made by Americans and they spend it without saving. That's just what happens in this world. Okay, and I'm not great at it. I should be better. Now, who was held responsible for the Great Depression? The President. President Herbert Hoover. That's why I said yesterday that Alfred E. Smith wasn't that unlucky by losing that election because he would have been blamed for the Depression as well. So, what do we have coming up in 1932 when 12 million people are unemployed? The presidential election. So, what's going to have to happen is the country's going to have to elect a man that would be capable of pulling the United States out of this Great Depression. He's going to have to open the banks. He's going to have to create jobs for Americans that are unemployed. He's going to have to clean up a heck of a mess. And this man that's going to be elected in 1932, which will start out our next and final topic of the year, is going to be a man that served as President of the United States longer than any man in American history to this day and was elected to four terms. Franklin. D. Roosevelt. Can't anymore. Was that after him? Yep. Let me. That's a good question, Aurora. Very good. This is Franklin Roosevelt right here. Not limited. Not limited. Harry Truman. Not limited. Dwight Eisenhower becomes the first man because of the 22nd Amendment of the United States Constitution that is limited to two terms. And I think I could have got elected to a third if he would have had the opportunity to run. Who knows? But anyway, this was the first president limited. Roosevelt was elected to four terms. He died shortly into his fourth. Okay. Anyway, but he's going to be the guy to do it, and he will do a great job of it. All right, what we will do then is we will have a video tomorrow on the 1920s. You need to bring your, your binders because you're going to note some things in these booklets I've given you that I didn't tell you on the 20s. It's a great video. It'll take the period. Open note test on Friday in the Commons. And then we will move on to FDR and the New Deal and finish up the year with that, right? On time. Do you want me to take the year? You're going to need to take it.